Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be a little bit different. It's actually going to be my hijab story. Um, this is actually probably the most requested video, so I thought I would actually share this one with you. Just because I feel like it's actually the right time to do it right now. I have been in, in and am in about doing it for like the past couple of months and to be honest I wanted to actually I don't know I guess I just wanted to tell you exactly how it is I was like sort of stuck on how to say it and then I thought maybe like you know what if it didn't make sense or whatever but I thought I'd go ahead and share it with you guys today just because I feel like now is the right time because otherwise I feel like I would never do it so um first off I want to actually start by saying um, don't by any means follow what I did because that's not necessarily the right way especially when it comes to actually wearing the hijab it took me a really really long time to put it on um, I was really uncomfortable to begin with because I've had so many problems with my family over just the fact that I wanted to follow Islam so it became very difficult for me and I feel like Telling you guys it took me a really long time to put it on is a big deal because I feel like, you know, a lot of people would have done it sooner. Most people that I know actually wore the hijab pretty soon after they converted, if not before they actually converted. Um, so I didn't. It took me a good couple of years to actually get comfortable with the hijab. I used to wear it occasionally when I first converted to Islam or reverted, whatever you want to say. I guess you could say revert because everybody is born as a Muslim technically but then you know it depends on the family background and how you're brought up I guess um but I would definitely say that it took me a good couple of years to get comfortable wearing the hijab um I didn't feel comfortable walking around outside in public because unfortunately a lot of people in my local area where I live is a very small community and um you know I could go up to the high street and I know literally everybody like not literally everybody but I know a lot of people there that have known me since I was a child and I you know everywhere around my local area everybody's known me from a child so I think they already have that picture of you in in their mind about what they expect in a way you know everybody's got certain expectations of people I think and you know even if my parents couldn't accept it, I didn't want to deal with the fact that nobody else was going to accept it. And I didn't want to deal with the hassle that I was going to get and all the words I was going to get. You know, I, a, a, a lot, when I was younger, I got bullied a lot when I was in my teenage years. And it really, really affected me in a really deep, bad way. And, you know, it was awful and to be honest I you know I still think about these things and it hurts so much to think about these things but I think that helped in me not putting the hijab on to begin with because I was so scared of you know getting all the words and the abuse and everything because it is hard to deal with when you are so like you're so used to it and then it stops like you know even the people where I work the people where I work the customers they used to come in and they would make mean comments to me um and it used to affect me in a really bad way you know it would really upset me and it would really hurt me the comments they would make or the way they would look at me and I didn't like it and that is why I felt so uncomfortable with wearing the hijab I think personally it was probably the hardest thing I had to do, you know. Converting to Islam was not a difficult decision for me to make, but to wear the hijab was really, really hard. After I put the hijab on for the first time, I decided I would go I would go shopping, but I would go somewhere that wasn't so local to my home. So I went into the town centre, and for the very first time, I walked around with the hijab on. And the thing that made it so great, I think, was the fact that I went into Primark of all the shops. I went into Primark and I had my hijab on and I had a, a baya or a jilbab, whatever you guys want to call it, on. And, you know, um, a coat and everything. And I was stood in the queue waiting to pay for the stuff that I had bought. And there was a few sisters there. And there was one in particular who was stood actually right behind me. And she turned around and she was like you know all she did was say salam to me but to me at that point it was like such a big deal because I'd only just put the hijab on and I didn't know anybody apart from the people I work with I don't know anybody 
um, at this point. So, you know, it was really, really frightening for me to actually walk around with the hijab. That is the big difficult decision that I've ever actually made in my life. Probably the most difficult so far. Um, but, you know, it made me feel a lot better just by the fact that she'd like said salam to me. It actually made me feel a little bit more comfortable and I felt a little bit more like a, a Muslim as opposed to, you know, just a normal human being who, you know, doesn't follow Islam. Um, I think wearing the hijab definitely aids in, um, you know, bringing you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, just by wearing the hijab, it makes you feel a hundred times better. You feel a lot more protected. I personally feel a lot more protected wearing the hijab when I go out as opposed to, you know, not having it on. Because, you know, I've been through all of the ups and downs of wearing hijab. I wore the hijab and then I took it off again. Like, I, I didn't keep it on that, you know, after I'd gone down the shopping centre that time, I didn't keep it on. I don't know why, I, it's just like the fear, I think, the fear of what other people would think as opposed to the fear of Allah, um, you know, and I think it took me a really long time to get used to wearing it properly and wearing it out in public, um, and in my local area, it took me a really long time to feel comfortable even leaving the house, you know, dressed in, like, not, I don't want to say modest clothes because I was never one of those people that would put a tank top and shorts on or a skirt or anything. I was always in like jeans and a, a sweatshirt or something. I would never actually just go out in a skirt or anything. But it took me a long time to feel comfortable wearing the abaya and, you know, wearing the hijab and walking around and feeling like a normal human being as opposed to feeling like, oh my gosh, what is that person thinking of me? What is that person going to think? You know, what if somebody says something to me? That is the biggest mistake I could have ever made is actually what, worrying what other people would think as opposed to what I think, um, you know, and as opposed to what Allah thinks of me, you know, being a Muslim and being a good Muslim and wearing the hijab it is far like we are actually told to wear the hijab in the quran it clearly states in surah nisa that we should cover oh is it surah nisa i want to say it is don't quote me on it but it clearly states in the quran that we should cover ourselves um in loose clothing and um cover our chest with our hijab um i don't wear the niqab there is Obviously, different scholars have different opinions on the niqab. I personally don't wear it, um, but I know there's a lot of theories out there in the fact that we should wear it. Um, to be honest, when I started wearing the hijab at work, I didn't wear it completely like a hijab, as in I would put, I like, I would put a scarf. On my head you know like one of those two pieces that you get you get the little under cap and then you get the um one piece that just sits on your head and sits on top of the cap i would actually take the under uh, not the under cap i would take the other part of it the main part of the scarf and i would turn it around and i would basically put it on my head cover my ears and then what i would do i've got my coffee in my hand i would like twist it around and tie it and stick it in the back so like my head was covered and my ears were covered and then i would wear a turtleneck because I just didn't feel comfortable wearing the hijab at work because it is so close to where everybody is that I know and everybody that knows my dad and my mom and you know my stepdad and my brother and at this point I was so uncomfortable with showing other people that I was a Muslim because of all the negativity that I received from my parents for following Islam that I decided it would probably be better if I didn't go straight into wearing the hijab um, at work. And I feel like I keep looking over that way. Sorry, guys. I'm like just... When I'm focusing on something, it's, it feels good to actually share it with you guys. I know it's not very interesting and it's not really a huge, great, fantastic story. But, you know, it's, it's something that I've struggled with. And if you guys are one of those people who's in the middle of hijab no hijab look at all the benefits that you will get from wearing it as opposed to all the benefits you would get from showing your hair and trying to do your hair all nice and everything like we get rewarded for wearing hijab um allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows what's in our heart he knows 
everything before we even do it he knows what's going to happen and I kind of wish that I had used that and I would wish that I'd have like remembered that before I made the decision not to wear the hijab to begin with um if you guys are struggling with like you know going to school and not sure what your friends are going to think of you putting the hijab on especially if you haven't worn it like before or for a few years or whatever um definitely keep a lie in mind more than anybody else don't care about what your friends think your true friends i know it's such a cliche to say but your true friends will stick by you and you know allah is watching every move we make so if you're doing it for the pleasure of allah and you're doing it out of the fear of allah then you know surely you will be rewarded for that and inshallah allah will make things easier for you we strive to struggle in this world and you know allah says that we will not be given a burden greater than what we can bear so although it may seem difficult and it may seem very hard to go out there and put the hijab on and really like wear it and embrace it just remember that all of those burdens and all of those struggles that we have they're all blessings from Allah and they're like being we're like being graded for it for the the hereafter so you're taking a leap towards your faith by putting the hijab on I'm sorry my hijab story is not really um much more interesting than that um you know but it's it's true what I say you know I think just keep a lie in mind and you won't have any problems inshallah everything will be fine and Allah will reward you the most your friends are here for now but hereafter is for eternity so you you really want to look at the major outcome as opposed to you know the insignificant things that you're going to get in this world i imagine this probably hasn't been a massive help to you because i feel like i haven't really explained a lot but to be honest the truth is there really isn't that much to my hijab story there's probably more to my conversion story um which if you guys want to see it then i am willing to um go ahead and film that one for you uh but to be honest yeah i feel like you have to do what makes you happy in this life but you have to do it within the will of islam and you have to do it within the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know there is a hadith that says and i can't quote who said it but there's a hadith that says when when prophet's wives when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's wife like aisha radiallahu an um for example when they used to talk to somebody like one of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they would talk to them from behind a veil like it doesn't just mean that behind the veil is in behind a niqab and a hijab it means behind a curtain you know or behind a door they would talk to each other they would never be face to face with each other um so i think if any of you have any questions uh feel free to leave them in the comments down below because i am more than happy to help and if you have any questions you want me to expand on like maybe making another video then i am more than happy to go ahead and film another video answering all of your guys questions i i'm sorry this isn't actually a huge story or anything um you know i wish there was more to it but there's really not anything else i could say to you guys um apart from be yourself keep your trust in allah and inshallah make dua and everything will be okay everything will fall into place and the test in this this world is benefiting you for the hereafter so just be patient have sabr which means patience for those of you who don't know what sabr means and just say alhamdulillah and be grateful for what we have and be grateful that allah's given this, us the opportunity to actually cover ourselves and protect ourselves and you know this hijab is so many benefits just wearing the scarf so many benefits one thing my hair is actually in pretty damn good condition now alhamdulillah but not only like you know not only worldly things but you know we're hiding our beauty for the sake of allah we only share it with our husbands and our 
blood relatives like only our blood relatives the mahram not the non mahram um you know just think of all of the benefits and if you're struggling to put the hijab on or you're thinking about taking it off just remember all the things remember the reasons why you're wearing the hijab don't put the hijab on for the sake of trying to please somebody because if you're doing it for that then you're actually in effect going against Allah anyways because you're not actually doing it for the sake of him you're doing it for the sake of yourself I think anything you do in this life it must be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything else will just fall into place and inshallah you will find it easier like I said leave the comments in um, leave your comments down below and I will reply inshallah to all of them maybe through another video or I will actually message back what you've uh, commented down below um that's pretty much it for this video uh give this video a thumbs up if you liked it if you want to see more then subscribe uh let me know what other videos you would like me to film especially if you would like a re revert story or a convert story i might actually film that anyways and like i said anything else you guys can just message me down below um follow me on my social media i'll leave them in the links in the description bar and that is pretty much it so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm sorry it wasn't too much help um but i don't really know what else to say to you guys so thank you very much for watching and i will see you guys very very soon take care bye